What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video and this video will be about Andre and also all the latest Liverpool transfer news updates you will get and all the latest news around Liverpool FC but first let me tell you I'm so proud of my nation Hungary I watched Soboslai play live at the Puskás Arena among 67,000 fans it was an amazing game we scored two brilliant goals and Soboslai put in another fantastic display and I will come up with the match vlog highlights and the match recap uh, later today or early tomorrow depending on when I can finish editing that video but I'm absolutely buzzing really really happy about that game the atmosphere was crazy and make sure to watch the Shalai goal in that video that I will upload later today uh, I'm really really excited about this and uh, let's talk about Andre because uh, Newspapers are reporting that Liverpool have a first priority to sign Andre in January. So Liverpool agreed personal terms with the player in the summer and considered activating his release clause which was 40 million euros to push through the deal but in the end Liverpool didn't because Andre wanted to stay at Fluminense until the end of the season which finishes in December in Brazil they operate on a different schedule their season is from January or February to December and Fluminense want to sell him in December or January January and they would sell him below his release clause and Liverpool harbor a very good relationship with Fluminense and so Liverpool held back out of respect for Fluminense's desire to keep Andre in order to have the best possible chance at winning the first Copa Libertadores in their entire history so as a result Fluminense, the Brazilian club, maintain a good relationship with the Liverpool hierarchy, the Liverpool bosses, and they are willing to give Liverpool favorable terms in the January transfer window. And also, they will give Liverpool priority over other clubs. The likes of West Ham and Fulham have been previously linked with Andre, and it has been reported that Liverpool scouts were present at Fluminense's second leg semi final. 2-1 win over Internacional which was a huge win because they went to Brazil and they won away from home at Internacional who are a very very good team they are the team who um, Alisson comes from and Alisson's brother plays there as well so Liverpool remain interested in Andre despite signing four midfielders in the summer transfer window I think it's safe to say we are still missing that brilliant defensive midfielder holding midfielder who is who can stay fit uh, longer than Thiago can of course and who is a brilliant playmaker and Andre is only 22 years old. Newspapers previously reported that Andre has remained hopeful of a move to Liverpool this January when the window reopens so everything is pointing towards the direction of Andre becoming a Liverpool player in the January transfer window. The Fluminense president himself confirmed that they have talked to Liverpool and they maintain a good relationship and they said that they can even talk about uh, a potential transfer in January anytime even before that. They just don't want to sell Andre before the January transfer window which is understandable because if you have as good a chance as Fluminense had I mean they were in the last 16 in the summer and since then they actually qualified to the final of the Copa Libertadores where they will beat probably the biggest and most famous Argentinian club Boca Juniors so I think uh, I will watch that Copa Libertadores final with great interest and I'm, I will actually root for for Andre because that would be fantastic if they won their first Copa Libertadores final in their history I mean that would be such a fitting way for Andre to bid farewell to their to his hometown club so yeah let me know what do you think about this in the comments below and of course you can, you can support my channel further by either pressing the thanks button below the video or subscribing to my patreon link is in the video description you get great benefits and you support my work I can continue making these videos for you guys and also Ben Doak gave a very interesting interview for the Herald newspaper where he actually revealed that Ben Doak's granddad Martin Doak was also a former professional footballer at Morton and uh, he had a big influence on Bad Dog growing up. The fi my family are good, he said. They bring me right back down to earth. And the older players at Liverpool like Robertson and Mo Salah quickly remind me, listen, you are only 17. You have not done 
anything yet. Keep grounded and keep working hard. My first few months when I was in and around it a lot, it was a bit, oh my god, that's Mo Salah, that's Andy Robertson, I was starstruck. But I settled in really quickly. They are all really good, they are all just normal lads. I've had a lot of opportunities, much more than last season. I'm really enjoying myself when I get an opportunity. But at the same time, it can get frustrating because I'm not playing as often as I'm used to with the youth teams. I've got, I've got just to bide my time. But my time is coming. I've just got to stay patient. I have a good support group around me and they keep me grounded. And that's the kind of attitude that you need. Because at, at a young age, you should your ego shouldn't inflate. Look at how many young players wasted their talents because their ego got too big and they forgot about hard work always beats talent. And when talent doesn't work hard, then um, you know the hardworking players uh, overcome uh, those kind of uh, talented but not so hardworking players. I mean there are so many examples in the football world and at 17 there were many many young talents at Liverpool but not a lot of them make it to the highest level. But I think Ben Doak is at the right club because we love young players, we nurture them, we develop them, we give them playing time which is the most important and also they have the perfect time environment. I mean Ben Doak couldn't have a better role model ahead of him. Mo Salah, literally the best winger in the world right now. I don't care what anybody says, that's my opinion. And Mo Salah is the best winger in the world and uh, I consider Mbappe and Haaland strikers so just to clarify yes they might be better than Salah those two players but Salah is still putting up 30 goals and 10-15 assists per season on average since he joined for Liverpool and he already played six seasons for us so I'm really excited about Ben Doak's development and uh, going forward at Liverpool Alejandro Moreno a pundit at ESPN said something very interesting about Trent Alexander-Arnold and I want to read it to you guys and then we will give uh, my opinion and I want to ask your opinion about that as well. So Moreno said, here's the thing about Trent, Jurgen Klopp has had to find a place, a position for him on the pitch in the tactical setup to hide him a little bit so that defensively he doesn't get exposed. If there is a player that you have to hide on the field then he cannot be your most valuable player. The reason that Trent Alexander-Arnold is not playing right back for Liverpool is because he's horrendous defensively so they've had to to find a way, different way for him to play. With all due respect, I like Moreno as a pundit. I listen to ESPN FC sometimes when I have time, but he's spouting a load of nonsense. Just watch Tranox Ronald against Brighton and against uh, when he defended really, really well. And also this myth that Trent can't defend I mean, how could he play so many cup finals and perform brilliantly? And Liverpool won a lot of cup finals. Trent Roxanne is not bad defensively, but yes, he's not the best defensively, but going forward he's definitely the best right back in the world and i think the reason why Jurgen Klopp put him in this inverted right back role is to actually not ex not hide Trent Alexander-Arnold but to bring his better qualities which is going forward his passing is as good as anyone it's like having a prime Steven Gerrard or Kevin De Bruyne at right back when he can slot in midfield in attack and spray passes in behind the defense I mean just watch his passing range it's absolutely amazing he's probably one of the best passers of the ball in the whole world so to just put him at right back and say you just have to defend would be a waste and I think him coming central actually gives Liverpool more chances to take advantage of his amazing passing ability, his amazing passing range. If he's only at right back and he's bombing up and down the wing, yes, he can whip crosses in from there, but it's not as effective as sometimes having him in the middle, going into midfield and then slipping in one of the strikers, one of the midfielders. He can be devastating and I think defensively he's better than a lot of people give him credit for. Of course, he still needs to improve defensive, but remember, Trent Alexander is still a relatively young player, he's 25 years old. He still has a good eight, nine, maybe even 10 years ahead of his career. Hopefully he will spend the rest of his footballing career at Liverpool. So I vehemently disagree with Alejandro Moreno that uh, Trent can't defend and he's horrendous defensively. I think that's re really harsh. Yes, he had a bad six months or maybe seven months last season, 
but this season he is better and he is improving and going forward I mean he is the best right back in the world defensively of course not the best right back but going forward he is the best and Don Hutchison actually made a bold claim saying that his player of the season so far is Dominic Soboslai he said Dominic Soboslai is my in my opinion just a Rolls Royce of a player I had seen him quite a few times when he was playing for Hungary and playing in the Bundesliga and I know how good he was but to come into this Liverpool team in a team that has had quite a few red cards already and he's still standing out for me I think he is the player of the season and it is uh, Don Hutchison is right in that sense that Liverpool had a lot of handicaps I don't want to start uh, talking about the referees because just my blood pressure goes up and uh, there is steam coming out of my ear I just get so frustrated and annoyed by how many referees actually hate Liverpool and hate Jurgen Klopp with a passion and they want to hurt us and hinder us at every possibility I mean four red cards in seven games is absolutely ridiculous and way over the top and way more I mean maybe one red card the Van Dijk red card was deserved the other red cards are all arguable I mean McAllister's red card was rescinded Jota's second yellow card shouldn't have been a yellow the Premier League panel ruled that, that and Curtis Jones's red card that's debatable you know but that, that was really harsh the referee originally gave a yellow Dominic Sobosley sometimes had to play defensive midfield in this team because of so many red cards so many tactical changes Jurgen Klopp had to make so it's it's a little bit too early to judge Sobosley in this Liverpool team but so far even though Sobosley hasn't played in his best position which is an attacking midfielder a number eight in all of the games at Liverpool he still shined and he's still our best midfielder on the pitch and one of Liverpool's best players of course he's not the best player in our team that's Mo Salah, Van Dijk, Alisson I think they are all better players right now but Sobosley is like literally 10 or 8 years younger than those guys he's 22 years old he's just matured into a man and he already looks like a seasoned Premier League player who has played at Liverpool for 4 or 5 years that's what is absolutely amazing about him he came into Liverpool and from the first game he is playing like he has playing playing for Liverpool for years and that's the biggest compliment honestly it's so difficult so hard to adapt to the Premier League but Sobosle adapted so quickly and so so massively and of course it helps that we Liverpool I mean we're exactly looking at the kind of player like Dominic Sobosle we badly needed a goal scoring attacking all action like all desire work rate work ethic dribbling passing shooting tackling he can do a bit of everything he's like a young Steven Gerrard Liverpool were exactly looking like that in need of a player like that and I'm absolutely over the moon of watching him play for Hungary for Liverpool it's just so much like all over every week I just I'm all over this guy I'm really really in love with him and I'm really really looking forward to hopefully watching so much like play for Liverpool for many many years to come you can tell just by my facial expressions how happy I am that my boy the best talent in Hungary probably of the past 30 years definitely but maybe some people are already saying he's the best talent since since Puskas, Kocsis, Kubala and all those kind of players Puskas was a legend of Real Madrid Kubala and Kocsis were legends of uh, Barcelona and now hopefully Dominic Sobosle can become a legend a Hungarian legend at Liverpool I mean that would make me so so proud you know that I've been supporting Liverpool for more than 20 years since that amazing 2001 season where we made a run to the UEFA Cup final League Cup final FA Cup final we won all of them then we won the Community Shield and the European Super Cup since that season Liverpool have captured my heart my imagination and I love that this is my job now reporting to you guys the Liverpool community on my channel about Liverpool FC my favorite club and now you know 
my nation, Hungary, has their best player playing for my favorite club. It's an absolute dream come true. And I wake up every day so happy, pinching myself that I can do this as a job. So please support me further because I need you financially as well to support this channel. Link is in the video's description to support me on Patreon or you can make a one-time donation below uh, with the thanks button as well. And also just a small news regarding Liverpool. We have been linked with uh, Federico Valverde, Fede Valverde as they call him, the Uruguay international brilliant all-action midfielder before. But Fabrizio Mano now revealed that the Real Madrid have agreed terms of a new deal for Valverde until 2028. So a new like four and a half, five year deal. One billion euro release close confirmed. <laughs> I mean, that is absolutely outrageous. I mean, that's worth more than like half of the Premier League clubs probably. One billion euros. And uh, basically Real Madrid don't want to sell him. So fair point, uh, case closed, <laughs> I think. Valverde, Common Ringa, Vinicius Junior, and all the other announcements will be made soon. So Real Madrid are working on tying down all of, the, of, all of their best players. I mean, uh, Real Madrid had an amazing midfield with Kroos, Modric and Valverde, but then they signed Kamavinga and Chouameni and then Bellingham. They absolutely nailed every single midfielder signing. Of course, when you can drop 100 million euros on each player, then it's easy. But I think Liverpool pretty much nailed their midfield rebuild. Maybe apart from signing a brilliant all-action destroyer midfielder type, uh, somebody like um, Caicedo or Lavia would have been, but I think um, for the uh, money that Caicedo costs, he's not worth that. Definitely he's not a 100 million pound player, at least not yet. So Liverpool still have to find a, a player like that in January. And Andre would be, I think, a brilliant transfer for 20, 25 million pounds. I think he would be absolutely brilliant. Uh, circling back to Trent Oxfanot, he actually said, when the manager showed me the inverted role, I saw it as an opportunity to show I can play in the middle of the pitch. You might get one game, it doesn't work, and you play the rest of your career at right back. There's nothing wrong with that. But I felt there is more to me playing in the center of the pitch, and I saw that as my opportunity to show people what I'm capable of doing. I felt I could dictate and control the game from right back. But this was another dimension to my game. How could I evolve? That was what I was searching for, an evolution for me. I don't actually know what my best position is though. It depends on the setup. For Liverpool as a fullback, I have the freedom to get into central areas and create from the right half space and get down the touchline, put crosses in, create chances, get assists over the last five or six years. The setup at England is different for what the manager wants from fullbacks. Although technically it's two different positions on the pitch, I think both, st both systems allow me to get in the same positions, having a license to get the ball, dictate the game, control the tempo is the most important thing for a player like me. I'm not so much if I'm a fullback or midfielder, I'm a player who needs to get on the ball and wants to orchestrate the whole game. So I think Trent Alexandre summed up perfectly what his role um, needs and wants from him and I think an evolution for him and making him better by trying different things on the football pitch can only be a good thing going forward. For Liverpool, they, we can benefit from Trent him evolving and growing his game and getting better in, in different aspects of the game of football. So I think it benefits everybody. And let the naysayers say that can't, can't, Trent can't defend. I think he has proved uh, many people wrong. And yes, he had some uh, iffy moments defensively, but I think uh, if you watch the full Liverpool games, you will understand uh, that Trent is much better defensively than people who don't maybe watch Liverpool regularly give him credit for. That's my opinion. Let me know what is yours in the comments below. And thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a nice, lovely Sunday. See you later. Goodbye.